Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you th this morning. I'm presenting on behalf of uh, Rodolf Gonzalez and uh, Lael Parrott. Uh, Rodolf was a PhD student here uh, uh, four or five years ago and did his work on looking at the uh, stakeholder network on Eyre Peninsula, uh, pretty much associated with some other work we did with the NRM region over there. We need to recognise that regional NRM is a complex social ecological system. That is, it's got people, ecosystems and economics. And if we want effective collaboration and knowledge sharing, then we need to have that among the shareholders in order to achieve successful NRM outcomes. Which then begs the question, what's the structure of the collaboration that currently exists or existed at that time? Then using some fairly recent network theory, what can we infer about the strengths and weaknesses of the knowledge sharing and the collaboration? And are there indicators can, that we can use to show us how we might be able to be more effective and resilient? So Rodolf undertook a fairly extensive amount of interviewing and surveying. Essentially the questions was, were who was influencing who and where do, we get, where do they get their information from and who do they share it with? Here's a little caricature of some networks that we might recognise, a hierarchical one where we've got a boss or a dominant organisation that basically does the directing. Very little interaction between people within the group and between the network. We might have another group that can be described as cliquish, that is you have self-contained groups which are quite strong within themselves but do very little interacting between the groups and often subject uh, people to be isolated and to become uh, outside of the network. And of course then we would like to see more connected and inclusive networks where people are sharing and uh, being well connected and inclusive. When we looked at uh, the results from the interviews and surveys, 129 individuals, 24 organisations, more than 1,200 connections. This is then displayed using these network clustering algorithms and the bigger the dots and the bolder the lines the greater the influence that they, they, these particular uh, groups and organisations have. The grey area over here is the NRM board influence and the people involved with the NRM board. The dark red ones are um, uh, environmental NGOs. This dark uh, orange ones here are uh, Asadi, and there's a cluster of individuals and uh, smaller organisations out here that are largely associated with consultants and academics. When you look at the clustering algorithm and use it to look at what connections are being made, then it's pretty clear that the EPNRM has a very prominent role and it's making strong connections across here uh, to these other organisations and groups. You've got another group down here that tend to be a little less well connected and a little less influential, but you can see, start to see that there's some um, structure in the way in which people are interacting. And we can plot this also on an influence on the y-axis interest uh, arrangement here. And again, you see the predominant role of the EPNRM and SARDI in making, uh, making connections and influence. What about the geographic connections that are made? Well, you can see the very strong connection between Adelaide, Port Lincoln and Streaky Bay. And there's lots of trading going on and knowledge sharing going on within the network. But there's also some couple of connections in Brisbane, a consultant that was particularly influential, and some CSIRO people in Canberra that are interacting with people throughout the region and into, uh, into Adelaide. Then if we look at those in a little more detail, we end up with this very strong grouping here between Adelaide, Port Lincoln and in fact the Minipa, and that forms this group of blue uh, coloured uh, groupings. Then there's this group up here where the people along the west coast interact with each other quite strongly. And so you've got the tendency for this group, these groups to be a little verging on the, on the cliquish, that is, that they're well self-contained, but they're not forming very strong, uh, as strong a connections with other people 
uh, around them and within the network. And then you've got a other group out here in the, some of the outlying areas that tend to talk to one another more than they do with, uh, with some of the others. Interestingly, there's no overseas connections that were shown. Now, if we look at the, some descriptors of the social, social ecological network, diversity is important for resilience. If you have a good spread of expertise and interest, then you get better diversity. Obviously, you want to avoid duplication of function, particularly between, within particular groups where that, uh, that function just gets uh, 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 repeated within a group and could be more um, effective if they, didn't, uh, if they shared more openly. Connectivity and centrality. <clears throat> connectivity needs, has an optimum. If you have too little connectivity, then you tend to become isolated. If you have too much, in other words, the network becomes very uh, uh, focused on itself, within itself, then it can become limited and insular. Centrality is a measure of the degree of connectedness and nodes with a large centrality have considerable influence. In this case, if you look at the influence of the grouping in, uh, in Port Lincoln, then they tend to have strong centrality. But it can be a great asset if, that's very, uh, if they're very good and connected, but if it uh, falters or is lost, then of course it, uh, the network is very vulnerable. Modularity, thinking about modules and the structure and control of flow. Network is more robust if nodes are mostly self-contained. Lots of self-contained nodes have high modularity. However, if the flow and the interaction between the nodes is poor, then the network will not be very effective. So there's an optimum to be struck. And the ideal is to find whether there are arrangements that encourage resilience and robustness uh, of the network arrangements and the knowledge flows. Now, each of these uh, indicators can be given a metric, and these metrics were put into a simulated annealing optimization program, and you make slight changes to the connections that are being made to see whether there's an arrangement which would uh, strengthen the resilience of the network. And the way it's shown is on this checkerboard arrangement to show the outcomes from that uh, uh, optimization. And the darker the blue, the stronger the influence so in this case where we're talking about modularity, we see that local initiatives and industry groups have very strong modularity. In other words, they tend to be quite strongly internalised. And then if you have a look at, well, what about the connections? These other blue ones here, the environmental NGO and local initiatives, it, it, the indications are that they, the, if they made stronger connections, then there would be better knowledge flow and better interaction. Similarly, with more connection between industry and academia, there would be better flow of information. If you have a look at this uh, other indicator, the average path length improvement, and where would we suggest there might be some improvement to be made there? You see these industry connected to environmental NGOs, and that's a pretty weak arrangement uh, indicated from our analysis uh, from four or five years ago. The government connections with NGOs and both at the, state, at, at the federal and at the state level. Those connections tend to be a bit weak and uh, could very well, uh, the flow of information could improve if those connections were stronger. So here we've got uh, some conclusions. So it's pretty clear that the EPNRM, as it was in those days, four or five years ago, was a very strong broker and a bridge to the network. And unfortunately, that uh, strong connection, I believe, is now much less than it was and a great opportunity to make that strong regional identification and involvement of information exchange within the network has been diminished, unfortunately. Space is a very strong driver of interactions and Port Lincoln is very central to that uh, network. But if, if that uh, central location and interaction becomes too strong, then of course you can end up with uh, isolation of the uh, more peripheral groups. And that's not, uh, not particularly smart. And when you think about it, those remote communities, those that are further away from the big centres of centrality, they have also got their local concerns 
and they, it's really important that they remain in the loop. And that's been an important part of what the EPNRM, uh, with, particularly with its regional offices, was particularly good at doing. And so that was a very, uh, very effective and showed uh, great strength in the, in the network. So the local presence should be encouraged so that people remain engaged. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your attention.